Welcome to the land of enchanted fairy tales. Let's get ready for Sleeping Beauty. Once upon a time, in a kingdom filled with love and dreams, there lived a little princess whose story will warm your heart. Oh, what a celebration this will be! The entire kingdom is coming to welcome our precious baby girl. Just look at her, a princess in the making. Already such a regal look about her. She has your eyes, my love, the brightest of the brightest stars. She has your nose, gently sculpted from that of an angel, a mark of your majesty. Behold, the arrival of our little princess Aurora. May she have a long life filled with laughter, love, and the blessings of a little fairy magic. Look at those adorable little feet. It won't be long before she's dancing through the castle, bringing joy to all who meet her. Our dear little one shall grow in a world untouched by that wicked witch and her dark mystery spells. Let's rejoice in the fact she wasn't invited. No witch in sight. What a delight. Where is the king and queen? <gasps> Bring them to me now. <laughs> Along with a baby. Once, or you will be the next meal for my dragon. <laughs> oh no! What is it you want of us? We have caused you no harm. Why wasn't I invited to the reception of welcoming the baby girl? It's a simple question. Answer me with honesty or your precious baby girl will only see darkness through the mouth of my dragon. Your presence brings darkness and strife, so for the safety of our baby's life, we choose to keep this celebration pure and free from your wicked intentions. I come for you, my pretty dear. A spindle's prick, your end is near. I've sealed your fate now we wait! Your soul will be mine! Is that crystal clear? <laughs> In this kingdom I reign supreme. No one dares to challenge my dream. Bow down to me or face my wrath. I am the queen, the mistress of night. Soon that spinning wheel will bite and that will be my grand delight. Aurora's fate will be sealed by my hand. No one is safe from my dark might Or all this land through endless night My dragon's fire will burn all who dare rise And make me fall I am the queen, the mistress of night Soon the spinning wheel will bite And that will be my grand delight Aurora's fate will be sealed by my hand Bow down to me or face my fire For I am the queen And all must and must The wicked witch was furious she wasn't invited, just eaten up with jealousy. She threatened the royal couple that on the day of their daughter's 16th birthday, she will prick her finger on a spinning wheel, and that in turn will cause her death. Her soul would then belong to the witch forever. Until she reaches her 16th birthday, she will live here with you. No promises of your safety or yours. Me and my dragon will come here whenever we like. And we will do whatever we like. We don't need an invitation. Do you hear me? Amidst this tragedy, a miracle unfolds. The king, queen, 
and Baby. They are safe from the witch's evil hand. In darkness they hide, unharmed it seems. Let us take the princess for now. We will keep her safe. With our powers combined, we will guard and teach her each day. Protect her, our precious child. Keep her safe and sound. With your love and magic surrounding her, she will flourish all around. Come back only when the moon is pink. Then you will know the witch is gone. And with that, the fairies whisked her away to a cottage in the forest, safe from the wicked witch and that awful dragon. I tell you what, if you were here with me and could smell the breath on that beast, I am certain his breath alone would knock us all over dead. Ew! Let's get back to the story. The fairies took care of Aurora and raised her from an infant up to her teenage years. Aurora was always cared for and loved. However, with each day passing, it was one day closer to her 16th birthday, and the fairies were getting a little nervous. Aurora needs to start acting like a princess. Soon, she will be called home to the castle, and her manners are less than... <clears throat> proper. I hope to see the pink moon so she can go back to the castle and continue the life of a princess. We will all live there together, and life will be as it was before. Aurora, it would be prudent for you to read this book to prepare you for when you go back home to the castle. Thank you, Fairy Godmother. I love books, and I like frogs and having belching contest. <laughs> we have some work to do. If you want to be a princess, first you need to talk like one. One might say, I'd like my hair styled in a bun, please. A princess should know how to dance in a ballroom with a fancy dress on. And usually, princesses know how to carry a tune. And they have the cutest little giggle. <laughs> A princess eventually looks for her match. Usually a prince. <gasps> if I'm ever gonna be a princess, I've gotta talk like one. I'll have my hair in a bun. Dance in the ballroom till the night is done. Da -da 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 -da. Do -do 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 With a twinkle and a giggle, I'm a princess shining through. With a twinkle and a giggle, she's a princess through and through. With a twinkle and a giggle, she's a princess shining through. Well, would you look at that? The moon turned pink. Does that mean it's safe for Aurora to go back to the castle and live as a princess? Your name is Princess Aurora, and you are the long-lost princess of the Magical Kingdom. With a wave of my twinkling wand, you will go now, back to the castle, to be reunited with your mother and father. Your life as a princess is here, our dearest Aurora. Mother, father, it is me, Aurora. I saw the pink moon telling me it's safe to finally come home. Sleeping Beauty walks through the halls. Oh no, the princess is in danger. Surely this isn't how the story ends. Little did your parents know, I've had my eye on you all along. Happy birthday, young lady. You are 16 years old today. 
What a great time to be alive. I've brought you a present. A spinning wheel. Come, have a look. Don't be afraid. The witch had cast a spell on Aurora, drawing her to the spinning wheel and giving her a desire to touch that beautiful wheel. Ow! <laughs> what a great way to die! <laughs> All who see her will be reminded of what will happen if they do not bow down and worship me. My dear child, do not let your heart stop beating, for I have reversed the spell. And I will find you a Prince Charming to offer you a kiss of love. Your eyes will open, and the spell will be broken. Sleep for now. Help is coming, my dear one. The fairy godmother fluttered out the window. Everyone in the castle that fateful day lay sleeping. For years, the castle remained quiet and dark. Meanwhile, the little fairy flew a great distance to a faraway kingdom where she finally found the Prince Charming. You are the chosen one to break the witch's evil spell. The princess lays asleep in the castle and without a kiss of true love, she will stay asleep forever. Take me to her at once. I have been on a quest for years, searching for the love of my life. The prince and fairy too arrived back at the castle to find the beautiful sleeping beauty. My love, you lay in front of me, so still. Your hair is as golden as the sun itself. It radiates warmth and brightness even though you sleep. Your nose is shaped by only that of an angel. A regal look you have, my princess. Offer a kiss! Offer a kiss! Do you come for your dear? With a spindle prick, her end is near. Her soul is mine! Right away, with all his might, the prince takes his sword out and swings it with all his might. He swings so hard, sparks erupted from the blade and caught the witch on fire. Whoa! That was the end of the evil witch and that awful dragon. The fairy waved her wand with a spark and a smile. She turned that spinning wheel into a pile of harmless firewood, ensuring that no harm would come from its sharp spindle ever again. Now all good stories come to an end, and this little fairy tale is just about there too. Princess Aurora and her loving prince stood out on the terrace and gazed at that pink moonlight, waving goodbye to the fairy godmother, and the world embraced the magic and peace was finally restored. The two married, and they lived happily ever after. Hello there, Ruby here. I am ever so thankful you joined me today for Ruby's story time. This is the story of Little Red Riding Hood, and it gets scary at times. So if I were you, I would get your favorite blanket to snuggle up with, and maybe even one of your stuffed animals to comfort you. There are some moments that can get, well, a little frightening. But don't you worry. It's just a story, and let me assure you, you will be just fine. Are you ready, my friend? 
Let's begin. Once upon a time, there was a darling little girl named Sarah. She lived with her mother in a cabin near the woods. Her mother enjoyed sewing for Sarah. She made a beautiful red cape for her. And let me tell you something. Little Sarah loved that red cape. She ate with the red cape on. She picked vegetables from the garden with the red cape on. She played in her treehouse with the red cape on. And she even slept in the red cape. She never wanted to part with her red cape. And her mother finally said, Sarah, I think we should call you Little Red Riding Hood from now on. And from that day on, Sarah had a new name. Little Red Riding Hood was in her treehouse playing tea party with her stuffed animals and dolls and heard her mom call to her. Little Red Riding Hood, please come down. We need to have a talk. Little Red Riding Hood could hear in her mother's voice something was bothering her. What's the matter, mother? Little Red Riding Hood asked. I need you to walk through the woods over to your grandmother's house. She's not feeling well. I have made some fresh chocolate chip cookies, and I think that little treat will cheer her up. This made Little Red Riding Hood smile, as she always looked forward to seeing her grandmother, the sweetest little lady that lived in a small cottage in the woods, and they loved each other dearly. Do you have a grandmother? Ah. Oh, let's get back to the story. So, the mother made sure to give Little Red Riding Hood the basket of goodies and reminded her, Please, stay focused. And remember, stay on the path. Go right to Grandmother's house and never talk to strangers. So, off Little Red Riding Hood went. She wasn't afraid, as she had made the trip to Grandmother's house many times. She walked and walked through the woods. Little did she know, she was being followed by a very scary wolf. Every step Little Red Riding Hood would take, the wolf would take two steps closer to her. Good morning, little girl, said the big bad wolf. You look so pretty in your red little hood. Oh, thank you, Mr. Wolf. My mother made it for me. Oh, no. Do you remember what her mother told her before taking the journey to Grandma's house? She said never to talk to strangers, didn't she? Goodbye, Mr. Wolf. I'm going to my Grandma's house. She's not feeling very well, and my mom made her some chocolate chip cookies, and I'm going to go cheer her up. Toodles! And off the little girl went, walking down the path. The wolf had his eye on her the entire time, and you know what? That big bad wolf said to himself, That little girl looks like she would make a scrumptious meal for me. Why, if I had her for lunch, I wouldn't need to eat anything for quite some time. But the wolf didn't stop there. He stopped her again as she continued to walk. Oh, little red riding hood. I notice that if you get off the path just a bit, you will find some beautiful wildflowers. And wouldn't your grandma just love to have some pretty flowers? Oh, yes, Mr. Wolf, said the little girl. Flowers will really cheer my grandma up. And the big bad wolf gently shoved her off the path. While she was busy picking the flowers for her grandma, the wolf, as sneaky as he was, said to himself, I will run over to Grandma's house and eat her up first. And then I will hide in the house and wait for Little Red Riding Hood to come in. And I will eat her up too. <laughs> what a very hungry, bad, wicked wolf. He finally arrived at Grandmother's house and he knocked on the door. Who's there? called the grandmother from her bed. It's me, <laughs> Little Red Riding Hood, said the wolf in a tiny voice. I have brought you some chocolate chip cookies to cheer you up. Oh, my dear child, 
The door is unlocked. Just come on in. I am feeling too weak to get up and open the door. Well, here's where the story gets very scary. The wolf came barging in so fast, growling with his big, sharp teeth, and he gobbled up the grandmother. Oh, my. He quickly put on a nightgown, disguising himself as the grandmother, and he hopped in her bed, waiting for precious Little Red Riding Hood to come in. In the meantime, Little Red Riding Hood was able to pick the most beautiful flowers for her grandma, and she was almost to the house. When she finally arrived to the house, she felt a little afraid. She noticed the front door was open. Grandma? Grandma! She walked in the house and into her grandmother's room. The wolf said, Oh, my dear, don't turn the light on. I am very sick, and the light gives me a headache. Just bring your cute little self over here and let me give you a hug. Oh, Grandma, I'm here with cookies and flowers to cheer you up. Little Red Riding Hood came close to hug her and could just barely see her ears. Wow, what big ears you have grown, Grandma. The better to hear you with, my dear. Even though it was dark, her eyes were just adjusting to the room. Grandma... What big eyes you have. The better to see you with, my dear. Grandma, open up your mouth. I will feed you a cookie. Oh, Grandma, what big teeth you have. And then, at that time, the wolf sat up and screamed, The better to eat you with. Little Red Riding Hood was so scared. She screamed and cried, No, no, no and she ran out of the house as fast as she could. She ran over to a tent and noticed that there was a forest ranger sitting by a fire. She told him of this dreadful situation, and the forest ranger said, Let me take a look. So he went into the house and noticed the wolf lying in bed, trying to be all sneaky. Did you gobble up the little red riding hood's grandma? In a loud voice, he demanded the wolf to spit the grandma out right this instant. The wolf cried, Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. <laughs> the forest ranger punched him right smack in the nose and pulled his tail. And the wolf spit the grandma out. <laughs> Woo! Don't you worry. The grandma wasn't harmed. She was just fine. But did she ever have a story to tell? <laughs> Little Red Riding Hood and Grandma enjoyed some cookies and milk before she had to walk back home. As she walked home, she thought to herself, I will never wander off the path that I have been given ever, ever, ever again. Thank you for joining me here on Family Roberto. I hope you enjoyed the story of Little Red Riding Hood. And remember, always stay focused on what you are supposed to be doing and never, ever talk to strangers. Until next time, bye friends. <laughs>